Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's lesson, we're gonna finally talk about these economic systems that I've been talking about. So we're gonna look at the four main economic systems that can be found around the world. So make sure you're in your interactive notebook and you're following along. Okay, we're on page six of your interactive notebook. And again, we're talking about our economic systems. Our central question for today is, what are the basic economic systems and how do they answer the three economic questions? So as a reminder, let's go ahead and talk about those three economic questions that we talked about in our last lesson. Remember question number one asked, what are we gonna make? What goods and services are we gonna produce in our society? Question number two, how are we gonna make it? What productive resources are we gonna to use to make those goods and services? And thirdly, for whom are we going to produce them? Who's gonna be able to have access to these goods and services that we've produced? As a society answers these three questions, that determines their, drum roll please, you guessed it, their economic system. Woo, we're finally here, we're finally talking about this. I've been drumming it up. So let's look at the four main economic systems. We have traditional economies, command economies, market economies, and mixed economies. Three of these four really aren't used anymore. Only one is basically predominant, but there are traces of them found around the world. So let's talk a little bit more in detail about each one. Our first is the traditional economy. For each of these, we're gonna talk about how they answer the economic questions, which are listed in your interactive notebook. So when we talk about what are we going to make, in a traditional economy, people are gonna follow customs and traditions, get it, uh, to make what, whatever their ancestors made. This is kind of the mentality of if it's not broke, don't fix it. You just kind of keep doing what happened before you. Who's gonna decide what to produce? Again, this is gonna come down to customs, traditions, what's been done before them. People are gonna grow and make things the way in which previous generations did. They're also gonna follow in the same types of jobs. If your dad was, say, a baker, you're probably going to be a baker. Thirdly, who are the goods and services for? This is gonna come down to people who need it. In a traditional economy, usually you think it's very small communities, tribal, like the picture suggests. So it's gonna come down to who needs it in the village. Usually it's gotta be one of those kind of like everybody gets it because everybody's gonna need it. Command economies. In a command economy, who decides what's to produce? It's gonna come down to the government. In a command economy, the government has 100% control, not only of the government, but also of the economy. So who decides what, to, how to produce it? Again, it's gonna come down to the government. The government's gonna own all of those factors of production, so they get to decide how to distribute them out and how to utilize them to whatever they want. So if the government wants certain products produced, the government gets to decide, and then they get to allocate or distribute out those resources in order to create those products. So think about in a command economy, if the government says we don't need 17 different types of jeans, think about it. if you went to the mall today, you could probably find 17 different pairs of jeans that are basically the same thing, but look a little bit different. Command economy would be like, no, that's a waste of time. Here are generic jeans, wear those, and we'll use the resources for other things. So that's what happens, a command economy gets to decide that, or the government decides in a command economy. Who are these goods gonna be produced for? Government's gonna decide who they're gonna give them to. Are they gonna put it out to the highest bidder? Are they gonna give it to everybody? Is it gonna be an equity issue? It all is decided by the, the government. So the name of the game in a command economy, government is in charge. The who, the what, the when, the for, the who, it all comes down to the government because they are 100% in control. This can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. Having everything provided to you by the government, hey, everything's provided. But the bad part of it could be, yes, it's provided, but is it quality? Is it what you want? Is it what you want to do? Hmm, might not be. So it has its pros and its cons. Our third economic system is a market economy. This is going to be the 100% opposite of a, a command economy. So in a command where we had 100% government control, in a market economy, there is zero government control. The businesses are all in control. There are no government regulations. Nobody's telling you what to do. It's all up to whatever the business wants to do. So the businesses base their decisions on the supply and demand of a good uh, and the free enterprise. Basically, the price drives it. Consumers don't like the price. They're not going to pay for it. If people aren't paying and buying for it, 
then producers are going to say, maybe we shouldn't make this product. Or if people are paying for it, ooh, people are paying for it. Maybe if I jack the price up a little bit, maybe they'll buy more or maybe I'll stimulate some growth. So it all comes down to the producers. Who decides how to produce? That's going to come down again to the individual businesses. In this type of economy, the households own the factors of production. So the businesses are going to purchase them from those private individuals. They get to decide how much they're going to buy, how much they're going to spend, what they're going to allocate, so on and so forth. So they get to make all of the decisions. Again, no government involvement. And then who's it going to be produced for? This is going to come down to one of those situations, the highest bidder, whoever's willing to pay for it, who can afford to buy it, that's who's going to be able to get it. Lastly, we have our mixed economy. As it suggests, it is a mixture of all, all the different types of economies. You're going to have who's going to make, who's going to decide is going to come down to the businesses, the consumers, and a little bit of the government. How are we going to produce it? Again, it's going to come down to the businesses and the government. There will be some government regulation. There will be a little bit of freedom on the business side to do what you want. You just want to try not to have the two clash. Lastly, who who are the goods and services produced for? This is going to come down to who can afford to buy it. In certain situations, it might come down to an equity issue. It might be distributed out to different people. It kind of depends in a mixed economy on the business, on the government, and on the type of good. So these are our economic systems, traditional, command, market, and mixed. Mixed economies are the most popular around the world today because, again, they're a mixture of all the different ones. Command economies basically died out. They used to be prevalent in places like Russia and the Soviet Union um, and Eastern Europe. There is still a command economy in North Korea and Cuba, which we'll use as case studies later on. Um, traditional economies, not really around anymore, maybe in some small tribal communities, but not really. And market economies, the same thing. Because they have zero government regulation, there aren't many of them around today. So again, mixed economies are the most popular, they're the most prevalent, and that's what the United States has. So again, in this unit, we've been talking about economic systems and ways in which a society can determine what they have. This will lead us into our next unit on microeconomics, where we can start determining and talking about how individuals interact with the economy. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for our next episode in our next unit.